Hey guys, I wanted to take a minute to just talk about this 67 Camaro that we have behind us here. Uh, we got this from another shop. It's kind of a hodgepodge of parts when we got it, but uh, I kind of go through what we use and what works and what doesn't work with the swap. Uh, it's a fairly common swap for us, these first gen Camaros, and uh, there's a lot of stuff you can get wrong and make it not so easy to put in and figure it'd just be simple for me to go through and kind of tell you what we used and what works and what didn't work and what we would normally do maybe make it easier for you if you guys are doing this in your garage or uh you know have a project that you already got going and uh or helping someone else with but let me just walk through a couple things here and i'll just kind of narrate what we've done So let me go ahead and just point out some of the things in here that have been used and uh, some of the things that we typically use and some of the things that we don't typically use. Uh, and first, I'll start off with this Holly intake manifold. Uh, not something that we would typically use. Uh, this is a Holly mid-ram. Uh, it's kind of a dual quad setup uh, with a high ram lid on it. Uh, it's the factory LS3 intake manifold is probably one of the better intakes that GM ever created. So out of the box, it, it performs really well and really doesn't need to be changed. Uh, you know, this looks cool, but at the end of the day, uh, when you start talking about hood clearance and uh, performance, it's, you know, something you just kind of got to deal with. And like I said, we wouldn't normally do that. Uh, another thing that we would normally use uh, is the Holly accessory drive. Uh, we use them on a lot of swaps. Uh, this one has the Sandin SD5 uh, compressor. So uh, the outlets are kind of on the top. Uh, the SD7s are normally on the side, which is a little more uh, appealing looking. Uh, you can kind of hide the hoses a little bit better. Um, but this setup, like I said, is from Holly. Uh, this is the Holly high mount system. Uh, it's pretty much based off of the Corvette C6 design and C5 design. Uh, it uses uh, machined blocks to space out depending on the crank pulley that you're using and uh, makes it a very nice installation. Uh, 90% of the cars that we do here uh, a lot of times need the high mount AC and the high mount alternator to fit over frame rails or control arms. And uh, like I said, it's very popular. We use it a lot. Uh, some of the things just dress up. Obviously, it's got the Holly valve covers. Uh, they're pretty nice. Kind of expensive for what they are, but they are very nice uh, valve covers. Um, it has a Griffin radiator with the twin electric fans in it. Uh, they are small units, pretty nice, right out of the box. Um, you can get this right from Summit. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty nice unit. Uh, the fuel rails obviously come with Holly. Uh, we do a fair amount of fuel rails on stock uh, intake manifolds just because it kind of looks nicer than the factory uh, crossover piece. Um, one thing that we have started using more is the Holly uh, Terminator X uh, electronics. Uh, it's a nice upgrade over the factory GM electronics, uh, which we do a lot of. But these new Holly units, uh, they're very, very simple to use and very, very simple to set up. Uh, I, I think that any guy in his garage could probably get one of these cars rolling uh, with this setup. Um, in this particular case, uh, I actually used the three and a half inch screen that comes with the Terminator just to put a base tune in it, just to see uh, how it would fire up. And surprisingly, it actually fired right off uh, on the first hit. Uh, and this is a, like I said, LS3 engine with uh, Brian Tooley stage three turbo cam in it. So it's not stock and it, it fired right up. So 
uh, you know, it'll definitely do it. Um, we, we would typically tune this on the laptop. Uh, I just really wanted to test the Holly Terminator on a fairly modified application to just see how it would work right out of the box. And uh, surprisingly, it actually works really well. And uh, we will definitely use a lot more of these in the future, uh, especially for forced induction applications where they're just better than the factory system uh, and easier to work with. So that's, that's kind of the motor uh, portion of it. Uh, one thing that I will point out is the mounting system that we used for this engine, uh, this particular one has the transdapt mounts on it. So it uses a factory clamshell style mount and it's a rubber mount. Uh, we also used the uh, transdapt headers. I believe they're made by Headman, but these are a mid mount or a, a, a mid length header. So they don't go all the way down. Uh, but they do give plenty of clearance around the steering box. In this case, uh, this car was originally a uh, manual steer and we put a, a power box in it. But uh, they fit really well. Um, the cross member fits really well. This car has a T56 manual transmission in it and uh, they, the mounts just fit. Uh, Holly and Transdapt are basically the same company. The mounts are basically the same as the Holly mounts. Uh, the Holly mounts are just kind of sold uh, with the clamshell and the mount separately where the Transdap will come as one piece. Uh, the benefit to that is the Holly, you could put a polyurethane mount in it and it'd be a little bit better of a, of a mount in my opinion, but uh, they're basically the same thing, basically the same cost. Uh, one thing I, I will add about the mounts is this car when it came to us in a pile of parts, it had a Champ oil pan on it. Uh, we don't use a lot of Champ oil pans uh, just because they're cheaper. And uh, I, I pers personally would rather use a Holly pan. It's a cast aluminum pan, just like it was from the factory. Uh, we can make them fit in all kinds of applications. Uh, you can even get them with to turbo oil drains in them. So uh, it's, it's a really nice pan and they're made to fit with the holly products so we typically use those as much as we can uh, so this it does have a little clearance issue with the oil pan and the transdap mount so you know that's that's kind of a, a trade-off we have here using you know two different manufacturers so um, that that kind of sucks but uh, it is what it is and uh, that's kind of what you deal with and you get a box of parts and things that we deal with a lot with people uh you know not exactly knowing what to get and uh you get a bunch of parts that don't fit so i'm gonna hop to the interior of this car real quick uh, we did a american auto wire chassis harness in this car uh, which we do a lot of chassis harnesses from american auto wire that's kind of our go-to uh in this case we're actually waiting for some dakota digital gauges which again, something that we use in 99% of the cars that we do. Uh, we also did a McLeod hydraulic clutch conversion, which I'm sure it's impossible to see, but uh, it fits very well. It, it works very well. We do it in a lot of first gen Camaros and uh, it looks like a crazy mess in here, but it's kind of controlled chaos. And uh, once we get the gauges in, we'll be able to really clean it up a lot. But something we do again, uh, on pretty much every car because uh, these cars are obviously 40 50 years old now and who knows who's been in there and what kind of craziness is going on so so I hope that's helped some of you uh, if you have any questions about the swap uh, you know hit us up I'm happy to answer any kind of questions you have regarding the swap or wiring or what works what doesn't work uh, this car is a fairly common swap for us uh, the first gen Camaros are gaining in popularity every day, I think. So, uh, you know, it's something we see a lot. Uh, we've used pretty much every sort of uh, mounting uh, application and all kinds of different stuff. Uh, so we pretty much have a good idea of what works, what doesn't. And uh, yeah, so if there's anything you guys need to know, you know, hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to 
answer anything I can. Uh, if, you know, if you're doing a swap and it doesn't isn't a '67 Camaro, you know, shoot us a message. I'm happy to answer anything I can, wiring wise, mounting wise. Uh, we put these things in just about everything, and uh, we've come across a lot. And uh, I'm sure we could probably help you out. So uh, thanks for watching. And I will get back to you guys on the next car. I think the next one we're going to do is a 69 Firebird, which we did uh, not too long ago, but it came back after paint. And that is an LSA powered 69 Firebird. And uh, we're just finishing up some stuff on it. And uh, we can kind of go through the same process of what we used, what fits, what doesn't, and uh, where we're going with it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys later.